How are you today? Well, I'm. I don't really know. I'm. I'm kind of a little in a little baffled, and and that's why I think discussing the myth of Sisyphus is going to be therapeutic for me, because this is patroma therapy. Mm hmm. Can you expand on that? <laughs> Being baffled. I yeah. don't know. It's just like everything I do gets undone. Everything I try changes. I was going to go get groceries, but now we're in a code red in Dallas with the pandemic. And then I was mad at my cell phone because it wasn't keeping the charge. And I was going to go get a flip phone. And then all of a sudden today it's keeping the the charge. And then some person called me yesterday and asked me why he shouldn't commit suicide. And I'm I'm just a little bit out of juice, a little bit a little bit out of like mental juice. Mm -hmm. And and I kind of felt like maybe Sisyphus was also out of mental juice, but he just kept pushing his rock. Good. Because I lied so many times today. Like uh me too, I think uh I can compare myself to Sisyphus because he's been condemned for his chronic deceitfulness, right? To push a boulder uphill for eternity. That's probably which he waits for which is awaiting me too. <laughs> what, tomorrow or you're going back to work in Moscow? Is that, is that the problem? Or just in life? Uh, in Moscow in particular and in life general in general. How many times did you lie in your life? When was the last time you lied? I'm lying right now. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, the Sisyphus <laughs> lied to Zeus. Well, the last time he lied, he was chained to... Or he was condemned, probably. Well, see, like, see, like I always thought that the quintessential... So, it, so it's whoever challenges the gods... You, whoever challenges the gods, the gods have to put them in their place. So I always thought that the main person that challenged the gods was Prometheus, who found fire and gave it to humanity. And then, uh, you know, the gods got really mad and chained him to a rock. And an uh, eagle came and chewed out his liver. And then the liver would grow back. And then the eagle would come and chew it out. So it's like eternal punishment. Mm -hmm. So I always thought that the quintessential dude that challenged the gods because of his intelligence was Prometheus. But I have since found out that Sisyphus is also another character from Greek mythology. He was the king of Corinth in Greece. And uh, he tricked death. And then Zeus, the head of the Greek pantheon, punishes him and now he's just a symbol of anyone who messes with the natural order of things so death is part of the natural order of things and we think that we can trick death that we can do things to be immortal but we can't because we're just mortals and so uh, Sisyphus was punished for challenging Zeus and and disrupting the natural order of things. Well, there Sisyphus was punished because he chained death up so humans could live forever. That probably yeah. changed the order, the natural order that existed at the time, but uh, um, he could yeah, care like, less mm. about what the gods said about fate, right? He was like, okay, I do what I want. He was a king, after all. I just yes, he was a king. Yeah. yeah, and then we also find out from him in Homer, who wrote the Iliad and the Odyssey. So Homer is is a uh, part of the oral tradition, and it's written down the the Iliad. And Homer describes Sisyphus as the most cunning of men. He's the most cunning of men, and in the first episode, the king dies, Sisyphus dies, and he goes into the underworld, Hades. And then when he's down there, he wrestles with Thanatos. Weren't we talking about Thanatos with Freud or something? Death wish or what? 
Yeah, that's what Freud called. There's eros, the drive for life, and thanatos, the drive for death. That basically means so suicide. Death is suicide? No, that uh, the death wish leads to suicide. And uh, I'm not going to use this word very often, but let me say that Camus said that uh, the only philosophical question that exists is whether or not we have to commit suicide. I'm sorry, I apologize. I know you don't like the subject, but... Uh, no, no, no. no. Well, I, well, well, I would just rephrase it. I would say that in Camus, Camus took on the story of Sisyphus, and Camus also said the question of life is why shouldn't we commit suicide? So it's a question about life. What is the meaning of life? So we're like when when uh, Sisyphus goes into the underworld and he's wrestling with Thanatos the personification of death he, he tied him up and then no one had to die. Yeah. And then it turns out that, that uh, you know He's not his wife is not supposed to make some offerings to the gods or something, then she does or tells a secret or something, and then you know everything's messed up. But basically, you know, he's challenged the gods, dared to wrestle death, and now Zeus has put him in his place. He his place is on the rock, rolling the rock up and down because he's upset the natural order of things. And you can't mess with death. Death, death has to be free to do his thing. Uh -huh. You mm -hmm. said that Sisyphus, that Homer considered Sisyphus the craftiest, not the trickiest of men, right? Well, the the <clears throat> the wording in in Homer I Iliad is Sisyphus is the most cunning of men, mm -hmm. the most clever, the most clever. And as, as a punishment how... for for his trickery. Uh, he was made to endlessly roll a huge boulder up a steep hill, is that right? Well, just being clever is okay, but he he effing messed with death. You can be clever and, you know, like, you know, Daedalus built the labyrinth and Icarus flew on wax wings. Like, you can be clever and do all kinds of stuff, but do not mess with death. Yeah, but I say it was self-defense in his case. Because death one. <laughs> Death what? Yeah, death wanted to have him killed, and he tricked death and chained up. And uh, then God said, well, that's not how we would uh, like it to be. And uh, they condemned him and freed death again, right? Well, yeah, death death exists because, you know, where people are still dying, especially in a yeah. pandemic. Yeah, death, death, death exists, but the Greeks were very curious about the meaning of life and death so like they're famous for the tragedies and they're famous for philosophy and they're famous for democracy and yeah yeah do you i have this feeling that you admire Sisyphus because i always consider him some kind of stupid uh due to him doing the same job all over over and over again like um like meaningless as polishing the brass on the titanic and uh, you somehow say, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that he's doing the, um, like he's carry, he carries out his punishment with pleasure. With dignity. Or with dignity. Dignity. Right. Dignity. Right. So is like someone, yeah, so someone who has a meaningless job is someone who works in an office, like the story Bartleby Scrivener, or like stories by Kafka, the trial. Just someone just pushes papers, pushes papers, a little office worker. That's meaningless work. There's no challenge. There's no nobility. There's no nothing. But Sisyphus used his clever mind to take on a really big problem. Like he wasn't just figuring out how to like, you know, build a building or redo some streets or build a bridge. He took on death. Now that's a noble opponent. That's what I call a noble opponent. That's a that's a guy I would date. I would date a guy that was like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, I mean, someone who takes who takes on, you know, uses all that he is to take on noble challenges. And Sisyphus, to me, is, it's like, um, you do your life with um, grace and honor. It's, it's your it's your life. It's your everybody has their boulder to roll up the hill. Like 
your boulder isn't mine and mine isn't yours and you know and that we all can push our boulder up the hill and complain about it and bitch and moan or we can just like heave ho here we go it's kind of like noble but do you do you consider your boulder a punishment Well, I'm human. Yeah, I'm I'm punished for being alive. <laughs> Life sucks. <laughs> yeah, I'm because, yeah. The wages of because I'm asking because it seems to me that the futility of existence we're talking about is sometimes some, somehow like um, you and me we are we feeling punished for I, I don't know what probably there are things we have to be punished for but uh, um, <laughs> we are not as courageous as Sisyphus maybe we should be. Well, we're trying to make this video, this blog thing, you know, that's pretty courageous. No, I mean, you're right. You know, Sisyphus is an archetype. You know, he's not a specific man that was walking around, that, you know, like, you know, Abraham Lincoln or John Lennon or, you know, it, it, you know he, he's a mythological figure of the heroic struggle. And if you think about the movie, The Titanic, the boat is going down. Or like you said, Camus, death is real. Death is coming for all of us. No one's getting out alive. But while the ship is going down in the movie, The Titanic, one of the memorable scenes that's so poignant is the band is standing there in their uniforms and they're playing their instruments and the captain says, play on. And you look at it and you think it's so futile, you're gonna die. Like everybody else is rushing around trying to get the lifeboats and people are in love or they got their kids or like they're trying to find their husband. Everybody's like in a panic. But the band just stands at attention and just plays. They they they're like they hold their station. You know you 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 uh, you know they're at their station and they're playing and they're playing beautiful music and there's there's something noble noble and tragic about the band playing as the Titanic sinks. Yeah. And I mean we're all going to die, and so. You know, like, let's try to do something while we're alive. Somehow I'm stuck with the word meaningless, because if the world is meaningless, there is no meaning in life. And there is no meaning in life, there is no God. And there is, if there is no God, the God is dead. And uh, we killed him. Who said that? Uh, well, Nietzsche said that, but the thing is, you know, God's still there doing his thing. He may or may not, you know, God, let's say God, let's call it him. He's there irrespective of you believe him or not. You just have the audacity to think that his being is contingent upon your belief in him because you're, you know. I mean, yeah. I'm sorry to say that. <laughs> I'm, what I, I mean, mean is I, that a yeah, lot of I, people who. I'm absurd. <laughs> I know I, it sounds absurd, but. Uh... No, no, I don't mean that. What I mean is that a lot of people think because they think God does, doesn't exist or because they think. They can't prove the existence of God. That God doesn't exist. I mean, I'm not sure. That's Go not ahead. What I said. I mean, it's not me who said it. It is uh, it Nietzsche, Nietzsche who said it exactly. But they both agreed. Nietzsche and Camus apparently that the life is meaningless, and then there is no God probably. And uh, Tolstoy, I think, uh, would have agreed with them too. Uh, so all the th yeah, but, great well, thinkers like, think that the life is meaningless. And here I am saying that. I no, no, no. You can't say no, no. You can't say life. all. You can't say you can't say all the great thinkers. Uh, Pascal three. didn't think okay, that. Should also Kierkegaard, Camus. Three. Well, but Camus re recanted that Camus in another letter that was published to the. The myth of Sisyphus was published, what, like the 1940s or something, and then there was a republish of it, and the republish, he recanted that and said, no, I was wrong. You know, suicide is not an option. Oh, I did not know that. Well, I do now, but there is first time for everything. You know why I mentioned Tolstoy? Because he wrote in his, in his latest work, I guess, Confession, he wrote that verbatim, my mental condition presented itself to me in this way. My life is a stupid and spiteful joke someone has played on me. That's what he said. And uh, he was yeah. 80 years old when he said that. And he didn't say How old was he? in his life. 1880? How old 80. was he? Well, he was a very old man. 
A O. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Well, the you know another thing is that I suppose that when a person is a teenager, they start to start thinking about you know what is life, what is death. What am I going to do with myself? What am I going to do in the world? And then when you go off to the university, you start thinking. And then as you come to these different, you know, crossroads in your life, you know, getting married or getting divorced or your parents die or you have kids, like these very these various markers in, in our life journey, many people pause and think like, well, what does this mean? Or like, is what I thought before true? I mean, you know, are yeah. you this or I see your point. 28 or 38? Say again? I don't know what my point is. What, I don't, I yeah, don't remember just, what my just, point was. I'm, you know what? what? I just caught myself thinking that we are living in this simulation. How's that? We're living in a simulation. I'm in my apartment. Where are you? <laughs> no, <laughs> it doesn't matter where you are. <laughs> well, okay. it sure does. It's I think, hot in I think that was an no, interesting I'm, conversation. So what do we do? Should we just end this and uh, think it over again or sleep on it? Well, I don't want to commit suicide. I, I'm, um, I, I want to just, you know, uh, say that, you know, Sisyphus and body is a great idea that, that some people rise to and other people just, you know, crawl off and, you know, yeah. Work at their desk or die. I don't know. It, yeah, we could discuss it some more. But yeah, it's a very, very interesting topic. I, I certainly haven't exhausted. So the whole, the whole idea of Sisyphus is how do we deal with life in the face of the reality of death? So the philosophical writers like Camus and Nietzsche and Sartre and everyone who's written about Sisyphus, all the painters, musicians. They, in modern times, also are looking at life and how absurd it is and what a struggle it is and how you just can't ever seem to really get anywhere and the final blow is you're going to die. And so even modern people go back to this archetype of the, the man or the hero who struggles against terrible odds. And, you know, like like in modern times, we struggle at work. We struggle in relationships. We struggle with our families. We struggle financially. So the myth of Sisyphus is ubiquitous. It, it permeates all of our life. How does that sound? <laughs> Depression. Depression. And here's why. Because I like, what I like about Sisyphus is like, if... The second part of your story was linked somehow to the first part of the, where he cheated death. That would have been great because if he cheated death and then God punished him and told him that you will never die or just the way you want it. But uh, in the meantime, you'll be pulling this rock up the hill all the time. And uh, he's Sisyphus pushing it. He's said, pushing. like, yeah. okay, like to hell with you, I will be pulling the boulder up the hill but I was I kind of had free will you know it it's another philosophical question and in exchange for that I'm ready to pull whatever you tell me to pull up the hill however long you want me to that would be a okay, well, that's... story okay well why don't we write that why don't you write that no I'm serious I'm serious thanks for sharing